out our dog walk in Overstrand on the North Norfolk coast. It used to be called the Village of Millionaires, you know. Winston Churchill used to have a house here. But we're not stopping long because we're off to Cromer, a mile and a half away, the gem of Norfolk. And I can't wait! This is my favourite dog walk and today Wilf and I are joined by our great friends Caroline and Delia. We're walking along the cliff top to Cromer and then we'll come back along the beach because by then the tide will be out. I never get tired of the breathtaking scenery. Oh this gorse is pretty isn't it? Isn't it lovely? The path takes you past the Royal Cromer Golf Club. Okay. Come on doggies, not far now. And eventually to Cromer Lighthouse a white octagonal tower built in 1833. So Caroline, this is where somebody saw the demon dog Black Shook. Oh, the one with the saucer, huge great red eyes. Exactly, the huge ghostly figure of the dog. Shall we take the dogs in? Oh, we could go and get cake. Let's go and get cake, I'm too scared, come on. Go, <laughs> yeah, we're running now. Cromer became a resort in the early 19th century, with some of the rich Norwich banking families making it their summer home. Our first stop is a cafe run by volunteers, and all the profits go to the upkeep of North Lodge Park. We're meeting up with the people behind the Barking Bugle newspaper, a tourist guide just for dogs. Tell me how it all came about, why a newspaper for dogs? <laughs> I think is that dog eating my cake? Oh, the dogs are eating my cake! The dogs are oh eating my cake. Yeah. Try, try Sorry, keep just... control of your dogs, please. Right. It's a really popular place for people to have dogs and also for people to go on holiday with their dogs. Next stop, Cromer Museum, to learn a little more about Black Shuck, who isn't just confined to Norfolk. Sightings have been seen right across England and Germany. Our Black Shuck derives from a story that a boat called the Ever Hopeful um, got into difficulties off the beach and sank and the next morning they found the captain and his dog dead on the beach in a kind of death embrace and they buried the captain in the graveyard and this is where they made their first mistake they buried the dog on the beach and subsequently the dog has roamed the cliff looking for its lost master. Oh, oh that is just too sad. Yeah. The story was told to Arthur Conan Doyle during a stay at Cromer, which apparently inspired him to write The Hound of the Baskervilles. Other visitors include the future King Edward VII, who played golf here, and Winston Churchill, who came as a child and wasn't impressed. Peter Stibbons is a historian who shows us how Churchill's thoughts have been immortalised on the prom. And it says, I am not enjoying myself very much. <laughs> how, um, old, how old was he when he said, I'm he'd not been, he'd, about, he'd been about 10. What? And then, of course, later in life, he would come down and the Admiralty yacht would anchor off and he'd be carried ashore by the fishermen um, just to keep, himself, to keep himself dry. And then there was a bit of a bust up with the fishermen because they, they got a bit fed up with some of the things that were going on and uh, declined to carry him. And at last we have found a bit of beach where dogs are allowed. How fantastic is this? For me, Norfolk has some of the best beaches in the country. Natalie Gray, ITV News, North Norfolk. <laughs>